Welcome to Net Zero. In what ways can Earth observation resources be utilized to enhance our understanding of the planet and effectively convey the effects of climate change to a global audience? Nancy Colton is a renowned environmentalist, communicator, and president of the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. Her work revolves around leveraging Earth observation resources to better understand climate change and its impact on the planet. With a focus on private sector applications of USG Earth observation data, Colton helps governments, businesses, and consumers make critical decisions on issues such as natural disasters, air and water quality, and greenhouse gas monitoring. Net Zero is pleased to welcome Nancy Colton. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Ivan. I'm so glad to be here with you today. It's, it's quite a pleasure. And thank you to um, Planet Classroom, Net Zero, and uh, protect our planet for doing this series. It's very much needed. So thank you for your time and your contributions. Thank you so much. So uh, the first question is, in the context of the race to net zero, how can Earth observation resources be utilized to enhance our understanding of climate change impacts and aid in mitigating them? I believe the key message I'd like to put forward today is to all of you is that Earth observations, whether they're made from space-based space satellites or um, ground-based sensors, are an integral part of anything that we're going to do to, to, one, get to net zero, to guide us to net zero, and also to adapt to the changing climate. Countries all over the world have not only robust satellite systems that collect this information daily and take the pulse of the planet, but they have um, superb working relationships and cooperation with even countries that do not have space-based assets. I think our biggest challenge as you know, citizens of the world is to ensure that we leverage the investments that countries have made in these systems to ensure that we're applying it to the greatest extent possible. We have to recognize that there's a system that is in place that is set up that provides us with that information. And that very same system has to be key to the future. Can you give an example of how private sector applications of USG Earth observation data have confirmed crucial decision-making regarding the pressing issues of global warming and air quality in the context of climate crisis? We see it happening with um, companies like Brazometer that use not only NASA data and NOAA data and other sets of satellite data, but they use traffic data and other things to create a, a product that um, with Apple, is, you know, is is part of your weather app on your iPhone. In the case of Brazometer, that's now been purchased by Google, they reach more than 400 million people a day with their air quality readings. That's a really good example of how the private sector is working in this area. What insights have you gained about effectively engaging and communicating with diverse stakeholders, including governments, businesses, and consumers, to underscore the significance of Earth observation resources in tackling the climate change challenges? The biggest thing I've learned is um, to be patient and to be respectful. I've been given your line of work and what you do. You probably understand that more than anyone because we all bring something different to when mm -hmm. we communicate. You know, whether you're a hardcore scientist, whether you're someone like me who's a communicator, or whether you're a policymaker and you're concerned about language being too strong or not strong enough, we all bring something to the table as far as how we want to communicate what are very, very urgent and critical issues. You know, there's always a reason not to do something or not to communicate something. Um, but if you feel very strongly, 100%, that this story needs to get out or this is how it has to be said, um, you have to go with your, what you feel and what you believe. So uh, how do you balance the need for scientific rigor with the need for effective communication and outreach to promote understanding and action on climate change? I think we you have to have an open mind. You have to be patient. You have to respect science. And there's so much 
assault on science today, which is very, very bothersome. You can do the best science in the world, but if nobody understand it, and if nobody is open to hearing it, what good does it do us? Mm -hmm. So we have to, as you were saying, always frame it in a way where it's easy for uh, the audience to receive. As someone who has been working in the environmental field for many years, what advice would you give to young people who are interested in pursuing careers in your field? I like to use three words. Believe. Believe that you can make a difference. That's where it's all got to start, right? The reason you and I are here today is that we want to make a difference. We want to inspire people to work harder and we want to make a difference in this world. So one, you've got to believe. The second point is belong. And what I like about what you're doing with Net Zero is, you know, you've created a network. So it's very important for all of us who are doing this hard work to feel like we belong to something, right? Or we're with like-minded people who want to do the same things that we want to do. Don't be afraid to get involved because you belong at the table just as much as anybody else. And then the third thing that I love to say is buckle up <laughs> because <laughs> with everything that's happening with this planet, we need to buckle up because life is life in itself is not easy for people, younger people who are entering this field, just believe in what you're doing, belong to entities and organizations and friends networks. And lastly, buckle up and recognize it's not always going to be easy but we're going to get through it and we're going to do a better job as a result. And with this, thank you very much to Nancy for sharing your time and perspectives today. They were truly enlightening. This is climate activist Ivan Ransom. I add my voice to the voices of my net zero international youth peers to monitor the actions of our world leaders to achieve net zero commitments. Together, we can achieve net zero.